Today, we'd like to send a special thank you to the following restaurants for supporting No Goat Left Behind, Vinegar Hill House, Purple Yam, and Roberta's. Show your support at these restaurants by ordering one of the menu items featuring goat. Goat is the most eaten protein in the entire world, yet in the U.S. we import most of our goat. Our dairy farms are forced to kill some male goats at birth because there's no market for them. Help make a change. Support No Goat Left Behind. Welcome to Snacky Tunes. I am one half your host, DJ Never Forget. Terry Diabolic is on the road again today. Uh, he is shooting his uh, new pilot for the cooking channel, and um, I wish him best of luck. Uh, 
in studio today, um, we have Laura Stevenson and a can, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what song was that? Uh, that's a song called Master of Art. Oh, okay. And uh, we're going to be hearing more from you a little bit, playing some songs live. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can, and trying to make it like the least nervous radio experience. <laughs> that you've, you've been pre-warned. All right, cool. The, the audience, you already warned me. So oh, yeah. I'm, 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 <laughs> but um, for all of you out there who are... Uh, long-time listeners, uh, thank you. But for those of you who have just started tuning in to us, uh, now would be a good time to pause the podcast or live stream and go back to episode 60, where uh, today's guest, George Most, uh, was... Did I get it right? Uh, Moats, close. Damn it. That's okay. You even corrected me last time. And I was like, I'm going to get it right. And then you think which one was right. Anyway, uh, Hear Me pronounces last name incorrectly. Uh, a number back in December 2000 of 10, um, episode 60 with She Keeps Bees, who I absolutely love. Um, on our podcast and pause welcome back and george welcome back to snacky tunes thanks for having me on uh so for those of you who just tuned in uh tuned back from that you know that um george was looking for submissions for the festival at the time and the festival was supposed to happen in june right um george who is the well tell us what you do well i'm i do a few things i wrote a book about about hamburgers called hamburger america which uh just uh, the new revised edition just came out this past may so we, we added an additional 52 restaurants to the book. So a total Amazing. of 150 hamburger joints in the book now. You look very good for a man that eats a lot of hamburgers. I work out every day. <laughs> I mean, that's what you have to do, right? I have to. I consider my hamburger intake to be a, a privilege, not a, not a, not a, um, not a the, right. What's the exercise routine? I usually ride six miles on the bike, uh, the uh, stationary bike every day. I run a mile, and then I usually uh, lift weights. Okay. So. And, and the weights are not your no word for hamburgers. No, right. <laughs> it's like, I'm doing hamburger curls, yeah, right? Yeah. Hamburger curls. Um, so that's amazing. So, I al- I'm also the host of a new show on the Travel Channel called Made in America. Which we're going to get to in the second part of your interview. Right. And I'm also the uh, director of the NYC Food Film Festival. Which is why we brought you here today. Right. So the uh, festival was supposed to happen in June. Yeah, for the last four years, it's actually been in June, traditionally. Uh, and we decided to move it this year because of, mostly because of the weather. We were also competing with a bunch of other festivals that were happening in June, like Aspen Food and Wine and a few other big ones. And it was just too damn hot. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I think that uh, this is the best time to do a, a film. It's, first off, I mean, the weather is amazing in New York this weekend for any of you right. who are out. But um, this seems perfect. It seems like I would not mind being inside or planning to be inside to eat and watch some movies or shorts. Exactly. And it's good. So um, how was the submission process? It was, uh, it was tremendous. I mean, every year the films, I'm not kidding, the films get better and better. Yeah. And and, oh, we also noticed a lot of people are making, actually making films for our festival now. Right, which you had mentioned before. It's actually happening even more so. I so mean, so do, do those films, if they get made, do you accept the ones that are made for your festival? Like, what do you say for like, we made this for you guys. Like, it's I just mean, not, not very ne- good. Not necessarily. <laughs> I mean, you know. I, the, the submission process was highly competitive this year. Yeah. We ended up uh, accepting 28 films, yeah. and there were about 100 and over 150 entries this had year. To, had to trim a lot of fat. Yeah, was, I mean, I, have, I was only a small part of the submission process. You know, that's I, what yeah. you say. Yeah, that's yeah. So when people come up to you, <laughs> right. you're like, "It wasn't me. I, I promise. It was, it's you, just George. Everybody, <laughs> you told me that off mic. Go get him. No, it's Jerry. He lives so. at ho- no. <laughs> <laughs> it was totally Jerry. It has to be. They keep it fair. I couldn't possibly be like you know the the the, the overarching god of food films you know uh, are there any that um, are there like the 29th film that you're like you that you can give the opportunity to give a shout out be like I'm so sorry I didn't make it in it was just like not enough time you know that's a good point there actually is one film okay. that we I felt bad about that's why I'm in just, the interview receipt exactly right <laughs> there was a film that was called Bon Appetit New York and okay. we, it was literally on the edge for I think it was on the edge for probably three weeks we mm-hmm. played with this thing back and forth back and forth and in the end we couldn't show it because the subject of the film we were afraid the audience would not un- truly understand what was going on. Uh, it was a film about a woman who basically is a, is a freegan. She goes and eats out of the garbage. Right. And we kept saying, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we actually make, why don't we make it so that, um, so that people, we'll bring a dumpster to the event and we'll all eat out of the garbage. Ah, I guess not going to work. So it was a really hard time trying to figure out how to make that event so. Right. J- just for the people who, because we didn't explain it, we explained the last one, that there's food pairing with all the films. Right. So you re- have recreated restaurants, you've... Brought in, you know, great chefs, oysters, shocking things along those lines. So that, you know, that would, that would you know, Darren Terrier, who's not here, uh, his first piece um, that he ever made was for um, I can't remember current TV current was TV. on Freegan, right? Freeganism. No, that, that's why we were on the fence because it's such a great movement. It's a yeah. great idea. I mean, it's a whole different side of the food world that we, we were looking to explore. But at the, at the end of the day, we be, said, how are we going to do? I mean, <laughs> could you have brought in a dumpster and then? I, well, I mean, you. but you couldn't have had like a chef put the food in there because I would go against it. Yeah. So. 
I mean, it was it was so hard. I tell you, it was so so hard, and I feel I feel bad for that filmmaker because that was it was there. It was right there on the edge, and that was the one film that we really are on the fence about. Is there a place where they can see the film just so we can give them a little? It's a good question. I can't even remember the filmmaker's name at all, but it was called Bon Appetit, New York. All right, was, so yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah, it was that's about, it was about a, a Korean girl living in New York City trying to trying to live off off of garbage. <laughs> good garbage. Just, good garbage. Yeah. Um, Tasty garbage. But so there are some films that did make it in. Yeah, uh, and the opening night has to be. Near and dear to your heart, a cheers to, uh, to burgers and beers. Cheers to burgers and beers, yeah. Um, how did you select who was going to make the burgers? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we have some great friends at uh, Bill's Bar and Burgers. Uh, they're actually in a film. That's in, they're actually starring in a film that's in the, that night called Burgerlution, all about the rise of, uh, of sort of fast food to fine dining hamburgers. Uh, so they're in the film, so they're going to be making burgers. Um, we also we're showing a film um, uh, about the, 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 that's being made by the Good Beer Seal people who who you know put the the Good Beer Seal on beer. Our friends, at, I, I don't know what that is. Yeah, our good our friends at Idle Hands Bar, um, and our good friends at uh, Jimmy Carboni from uh, Jimmy's Forty Three is going to be there as well with tons of beer. Amazing! Yeah, shouts out to Jimmy. Big beer and burger night. We're looking forward to that. Uh, and what are the film? What are the film pairings, if you will? Well, we're going to be showing a film about uh, Blue Point Blue Point um, uh, Brewery, which is out in uh, Long Island. No one can see you guys nodding. I'm pointing. I'm pointing, at a, I'm pointing at a guy from Long Island over here. Yeah, we're, we had big. We realized that everybody here is from Long Island, except for me. Right. <laughs> so we're showing a film about Blue Point beer. We're showing a film about uh, of the, the, the film called Burger Lucian. We're showing that night. Uh, what else are we doing that night? Uh, well, your website Schedule. says it's the opening <laughs> night, benefiting food bank for NYC, and you have Cud. Oh, and, oh yeah. And we're showing talk a, about Cud. Yeah, Cud is a film by uh, one of our favorite f- uh, food filmmakers, a guy named Joe York. Who's from the University of Mississippi in Oxford, and uh, he makes amazing. He made the guy. I think he's made probably thirty or forty food films now to date. Um, and he's he sent us a film. It's called Cud. And it's about a, a Georgia rancher who is basically has gotten rid of the whole corn fed model for raising his cattle, and he's raising them all grass fed now. And it's sort of his his very simple and basic way of explaining why it's better to do it this way. So. I mean, I know that it's better to do it for you physically, but right. uh, financially, how is he how is he doing it? He seems to be okay. He didn't really talk about the financial stuff in the film but you know he's he he said that there's obviously there's, there's a better way to raise animals and this is it so that is that it's one side of the story i mean there's different other sides i mean right. the taste is not quite there as far as i'm concerned but <laughs> you think there. that it you think that corn fed's better than grass fed it taste wise uh, definitely i mean i think our taste really? yeah i think our taste is actually taste buds in america are probably geared more towards corn fed animal corn right. fed beef for sure and i think we'll eventually get there if you're obviously you're in argentina or brazil you're eating all grass-fed beef so your taste buds are sort of shifted towards that so like when you when you have like a really nice Nice grass-fed steak in front of you. You're just like, I wish that there was a little bit of corn mixed up in here. Yeah, it would help a little bit. Unfortunately, I, w- I hate to say it, but you know, we're gonna get there. I, I, I mean, I'm yeah. I'm a little surprised, but yeah. it makes sense. I mean, it makes it definitely. You can definitely taste the difference. You can taste the grass. You can sure. ta- you can taste yeah. the grass. So that's the opening night, and then we have the closing night. Is the farm to film to table? Yes, Amanda Freitag is going to be our, our um, guest chef that night, and she's going to be kicking some serious butt that night. And uh, I like that it's um, Chipotle is involved. Um, yes. We were just um, – Darren is working with Richard Blaze, and they were just in Chicago. And Chipotle is actually doing a lot of initiatives to raise awareness of farm-to-table. Um, although I, the question asked is, are they doing that with their restaurants? Or they just, are. They are. I don't know about the farm-to-table thing, but they're definitely – I mean, they're definitely all serving all fresh, fresh ingredients. And they're obviously st- trying to stay organic and all natural. Which but. is interesting because the idea behind – uh, fast food is that the burrito that you get in New York is going to be the same as the burrito you're getting to California, and right. this method, that's not the case. It's going to be, it's going to taste a little different. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure they're using all local ingredients. So they're definitely keeping it, keep trying to keep it real as, as much as they possibly can. Which to go on like a more policy side, that it takes someone with that much money to be able to, you know, dictate the way that you know revenue is, you know, their revenue is generated and right. spent in marketing and all those type of things. So it's like. Very interesting. It's the only way it's going to change. It's a lot more work too. But yeah, they've obviously are, they're willing to do it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I I would now probably go eat Chipotle, j- probably eat one here and eat one someone else just to see how different it would be. Well, I'll tell you the reason you should eat at Chipotle is not so much for that, but definitely for their hot sauce because I mean they they have hot sauce. It's actually freaking hot. Really? You know, it's like you always oh, hot sauce. Yeah, it's kind of mild. That's not hot. They actually have like freaking hot sauce. It's super hot. Wow, I I did. That's good. You to know, know, right? The specific Chipotle brand Tabasco sauce. That one. The, would, like the brown. If I say "give me hot sauce" and then they throw it on there, it's like, "Wow, that's okay." I wasn't expecting that, but that's that makes me happy. Yeah. You know, that's hot. And um, they're going to be showing Truck Farm. Truck which, Farm. Could you <laughs> elaborate on on that on that movie? Yes, that uh, the, from the makers. Uh, one of the makers, I think, of um, King Corn. Uh, with this this film was submitted to the festival. And it's basically it's a it's a great doc. It's a beautiful doc about a, a couple of guys. One guy I think who actually turns the flatbed of his pickup truck into um, the bay of his truck into a, into a small farm. 
actually supplies some you know some uh, food for some of the re- from the restaurateurs in New York City. That that is amazing. Um, we're gonna take a musical break. And then we're going to come hey, back. Hey, Greg, this is Jack. Uh, we just got an email from the executive producer of the Food Film Festival who uh-huh. says that he will give tickets to the farm and f- farm to film to table that's for free nice to the first caller. Oh, Ooh, first caller. So wow. Which would also be the first caller we've ever had to this show since <laughs> August 09. So, <laughs> yeah, go for it, Jack. What's what's the number? It's uh, 718-497-2128. Uh, yeah, call away. Um, all right, so... We, uh, we have George in here from the uh, – and by the way, all this can be found on the Food Film Festival, all spelled out, dot com with uh, ticket information and all those type of good stuff. And then uh, we'll be back to talk about Made in America and all the other million projects you have going on. Yeah, thanks. You are listening to Snacky Tunes Live. I, I, we really actually just play that song not just to like give a break, but just so all the guests can eat pizza and like uh, while it's still warm. It's, it's really just a, a food food thing. Uh, welcome back to Snacky Tunes. Uh, I'm one half your host, Finger on the Pulse. Uh, we have George from the uh, New York uh, the Food Film Festival. I want to say New York, but there's also a Chicago one. There's Chicago now. And I, before, as it, and you were talking about expanding. Is that still? 
like hush hush or we're working on it yeah we're, right. we're trying to expand at the rate that, of, at which we can control what's going on okay <laughs> so it's a little slower than we thought um, before we get to um, Made in America let's talk about Saturday uh, Saturday Saturday yeah let's mm. get let's get those voices on Saturday, Saturday night Saturday, Saturday night which is essentially the uh, porn part of the festival that's right and um, why don't you take us through what the uh, evening will be I, I'm thinking sauces Bone marrow, Sa- you know, sauce- things, sausages, sausages, things along, <laughs> right. all, all things S. Yeah. Well, I've actually started by we decided this year after seeing lots of food porn come into the uh, festival, uh, food porn meeting, which is basically it's, it's usually beautiful shots of food set to music with no dialogue, no dialogue. It's all just sexy shots, beautiful, beautiful shots of food. Um, but then we, we started seeing a lot come in the last couple of years. And we decided, hey, you know, we should actually, why don't we create a food porn category for the awards? We actually have a food porn award this year for the first time. And then after we, of course, we got sort of all these films came in, this came flooding in, all these food porn films, and decided to actually make a food porn night. So Saturday night is going to be the food porn night. What, do you, what are you wearing? <laughs> Besi- right. I think a rain, oh, besides hmm. a rain slicker. I haven't decided yet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Something sexy. Uh, so what what can uh, what can one expect? Well, we're, we're actually showing eight short films uh, that are all. It's uh, not. It's not about the length of the film. It's, it's not about the length. A lot of them are short, though. A lot of them are very. <laughs> none of them are very long at all. But the idea is that you see a film about. There's this very sexy film about about an uh, octopus being made, mm-hmm. being uh, caught, and then of course you know cleaned and made, and it's of course set to music, beautiful music and soundtrack. Course. And of course we're going to be eating octopus that night as well. So whatever you see on the screen, you're going to be able to eat. Um, we're show, I made a film for about sex of the new Saxon and Parole and Brad Farmery, but it's all just just straight up food porn that just features Boudin Noir and um, uh, Pig's Head Tureen, which is amazing, which is incredible. And to, to eat uh, to eat any of Brad's food is incredible, but then to actually have to be able to see him make it on the screen and then eat it is just it's a, I think a truly amazing. It's, it's very like the now. It's very now. It's like I want. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, I get um, that now. I want that now. J- just to, I mean that's a, uh, such an amazing component of this where it's like you are actually. Living what's on the screen, which is which exactly. is great, which is why I think people love it so much. Yeah, it's not just about the food itself, but it's also about the you're you're actually eating exactly what's on the screen in a way. You know, maybe it's the chef made it, or it's the exact same ingredients mm-hmm. or the exact same recipe. Uh, so, and there's still tickets available for everything. They're still t- they're selling out fast, but there's tickets available right now. Right, uh, d- Jack, do we have a contest winner? Did someone actually call? Yeah, uh, hey. congratulations, Lisa Cheng. Oh, wow. c- hey, cool. Lisa, you are the first contest winner cool. and caller of Snacky Tunes. She Thanks. also goes by Astoria Gal. Oh, is that, I'm guessing that's a Twitter. So it's a follow our story ago. Yeah. Good. See how her, maybe she'll live tweet from the event. There you go. And she should. She should. Uh, she we, should. We, yeah, we definitely promote okay. live, live tweeting. That's the oh, wait, what, what's the Twitter for the event? Uh, it's uh, Food Film Fest. Food Film Fest. That's yeah. pretty easy. Yeah. I can't believe that. I can't believe that was that was still out there. <laughs> I got it years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think right like the second day of Twitter, I think I picked it up. <laughs> really coveted. <laughs> so um, as we've talked about before, um, you just don't do film festivals. You write books about hamburgers. Right. By the way, top three hamburgers in New York. Oh, I can't keep it top three, but. But uh, you need my burger GPS. Okay. That's another thing we have. It's what is a, that? It's very basic. It's just a, a GPS-based uh, hamburger map with all the suggestions that come is, from me. Is it an app? It's an app, yeah. And it's pretty basic. You just you, you hit this button on it that just says nearby, wherever you are, Nashville, you know, L.A., boom, hit the nearby button, and it goes zooming right into where you are, and it shows where the nearest best burger is. Wow. That's, there's no Wendy's or no other. Like, uh, obviously. Food, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to ask, because I didn't ask this last time, have you had Miss Ann Snack Shack? Down in Atlanta. Yeah, of course I have. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if she's doing it, but... Yeah, she's still there, apparently. She's still there? Yeah, she's still there. She's, kept, she's threatened to retire for the last five years. And she's got to be in her 90s now. Yeah, she has, I think, two, one or two sons that work there. She's, oh. not, she's not that old. She's, she's actually... Not. No, she's probably in her 70s, I think, now. For anybody that happens to be a listener in Atlanta, Georgia, actually, if you're from there, you probably know it. If you're going to Atlanta, Miss Ann Snack Shack, just carve out two hours before and then the rest yep. of your day afterwards um, and get the ghetto burger. Yeah, the ghetto it's, burger. It's pretty... Um, Vernon Jordan declared it a national historic site. Yeah. And, that, and Wall Street yeah. Journal called it the best burger of like 2009 or 2010. Yeah, it's, a great, it's a great burger. It's also a great story because she actually... It was a great story with Miss Ann was that the ch- a checkers opened up two doors down mm-hmm. to try to put her out of business, basically. Really? And so she said, you know, I'm going to change everything about this place. And she, went, she actually switched from frozen beef to fresh ground and made this thing called the ghetto burger and it put her on the map and the rest is history. It's, it's pretty... It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about your show. The show, uh, Made in America. Mm-hmm. It's on the Travel Channel. It okay. airs uh, Tuesday night, so tomorrow night, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And it's we were joking around calling it sort of like the clean jobs of micros, dirty jobs. I mean, that's what it you sounds know? like. <laughs> I get to go into factories and I make Tabasco and I make, uh, I, mean, I make a Corvette the, this week. Uh, this week I make a Corvette and I go to Wiffle Ball and I make Wiffle Balls and 
It's a wow. lot of fun. How yeah. do you make a wiffle ball? It's just two pieces of plastic that are stuck together. Oh. <laughs> so now you don't need to watch the episode. There you go. So, yeah. So there, there you, you go. You actually get to see me have I play a wiffle ball game inside the factory with the, all the employees. That's pretty so awesome. That's kind of fun. <laughs> and how long? This is your first season on the... Yeah, you, first you, season. You did not... Was this in the works when we spoke back in December? Uh, no. This just happened uh, February. February is when it uh, first came around. And there's like a rich history to the to the show, correct? Yeah. Well, it's a franchise they already own. Uh, the Travel Channel own, owns already. It aired for, I think, five seasons, four or five seasons with John Ratzenberger, who's the, uh, Cliff Clavin from um, you know from Cheers. Which is crazy. <laughs> right. It's crazy. He was very very supportive of American-made products. But they were looking for somebody else recently, so they called me and said, would you like to do it? And I said, you're insane. I mean, what? I mean, it's Me? great. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. So Tuesdays on the tra- Travel Channel. Tuesdays on the Travel Channel, yeah. And last but not least, you brought something for... Oh, yeah. <laughs> for <laughs> just for, actually, one of the trips up to Massachusetts, I, I fell in love with this, this uh, chip called the Wachusett. Wachusett. And it's just, it's just a, one of the best freaking potato chips I've ever had in my life. Well, it's I mean, I'll have you know that my favorite snack is a, like regular potato chips. And you got to try yeah. these. Yeah. Sure. I'll right, try this. Wachusetts well, George, from thank Massachusetts. You, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, do you want to give us all the social media? I know that. Oh my god! I don't even well, pick I a couple because we don't have all the time. For uh, Motzberger. I'm the my Twitter handle is Motzberger. Spell um, it out since I since it doesn't. <laughs> M O T Z B U R G E R. Okay. And then uh, Food Film Fest, which is great. It goes uh, Thursday through Sunday. Yep. I will probably be there Friday. Excellent. Please be there. Yes, and um, I'm excited. I'm so happy that you got to join us, and we'll have you on next time when we were looking for submissions. Yeah, excellent. Next Thanks. time. Thanks for having me. Uh, oh, last and trailers, everything, all the stuff on the website. Um, it's great. So now you guys. Actually, we're gonna play some songs, and then we're gonna have Laura uh, and Half a Can talking about uh, music and food and Czech radio and whatever else you want to think. You are listening to Snacky Tunes. Uh, coming up next, we have one of my. Uh, Two songs that I absolutely in love with: um, the Off the New Girls record "Vomit" and then uh, "The Breaks" by Planning to Rock.
All right. I love that song. Playing to Rock, The Breaks. Uh, the dudes from DFA gave me that record, and that song has been on repeat. Uh, but we're not here to talk about that. We're talking here about Laura Stevenson and the cans. We're, we're missing a can today. We're, we're missing, missing three a couple. Of them, man. Uh, no. three cans. Depending on the, the lineup of the evening, there can be many cans. Sometimes three, sometimes one. Depends. <laughs> Depends. Well, <laughs> usually it's a, it's a five piece band. But yeah. Let's get to the real question: Who plays the glockenspiel? <laughs> That's Peter, who's not here. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> so this interview is over. I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, so, why don't you give um, our listeners a little background on us? On you, us. Uh, I am Laura. And this is Mike in yeah. in the studio today. <laughs> um, we have an accordion player named Alex. Peter on guitar and Glock, and then Dave on drums. That's the kind of, you know, the concrete lineup right now, touring lineup. Uh, we started in like 2007. We're all from here, New York, New Jersey area. Uh, Peter's from Pennsylvania, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> and uh, um, We're from, I'm from Pennsylvania. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is going very well. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just kidding. Pennsylvania's great. My grandparents lived in the Poconos. Okay. Very All nice. Right. Back on track. Back on very track. Very nice. Back on track. Uh, yeah. And we like playing music together. We just got back from Europe. Uh, Where were you in Europe? We did a lot of countries. As far east as Slovakia. Uh, self book promoter? We have a, an agent over there who yeah. worked the whole thing, yeah. A so. very, very nice gentleman that took very good care of us. Yeah. How did you uh, travel around? We had a Sprinter van. Amazing. Yeah, so it was, yeah. it was good. But none of us were really well-versed in driving stick shift before going over there. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we kind of took a crash course uh, a couple weeks before and then really got into it the first day after getting off the red-eye flight. In Berlin, yeah. in the middle of Berlin, kind of. Oh, you didn't have a driver? Was you? No, never, just oh. us. Just us. No, yeah. somebody picked us up from the airport. He was like from the rental company, and he picked us up from the airport, and then he was like, "Okay, you guys can drive me to the train station. I'll take the train back." And so we drove him to the train station and waited for him to get on the train before we drove away because we didn't want him to see <laughs> us stalling out yeah. immediately. You're like, please, please don't stall on the way to the train. <laughs> we learned pretty quickly, though. Yeah, yeah, but we didn't know how to do the reverse button and so we, when button. we got to berlin and we had to get into a parking spot and we had to back into it we just put it in neutral and pushed the car <laughs> into the spot and then the next day we figured out that you have to like press something and we were thinking we were thinking that day, like because it was like a 33 day tour and we were like imagine at the end of this tour when we look back and think how we didn't know how to put it in reverse like, how <laughs> stupid it was really i dumb. mean but that's that's the that's what makes things so great um <laughs> I want to get into a song, cause, and then I want to talk about food adventures. So, Mike, oh. you know, you can think about that while okay. Laura concentrates on the song. <laughs> but uh, what's the first song you're going to play for us? Uh, this is a song called Holy Ghost. It's about uh, my dad. He lives on Long Island on a houseboat in Port Washington. So it's about living, living on the water, I guess. Okay. Laura Stevenson live on right. Snacky Tunes Radio. Here we go.
Applause Thank is you. not uh, <laughs> equivalent to the how awesome that was. That was great. Thank you. I was losing my headphones throughout the course of that song. That's a, that's all right. That's how. <laughs> that's kind of how it goes here. Um, so let's get back to Europe. Um, are you all vegetarians, carnivores? Is there a, a mix? Um, I don't eat beef or pork or anything with eyelashes. I guess is really the only <laughs> the only thing that stops me. Uh, from from eating everything. Our drummer Dave is a vegetarian across the board, but everybody else but Laura and Dave eat eat meat. Yeah, eat anything we can get. The pork free thing was hard because Europe it's like all about the pork, so it was hard. Any uh, memorable dishes or meals? <sighs> well, I mean, it's really different touring in Europe than in the states as far as like accommodation and hospitality, like the way the promoters and the people putting the shows together treat the bands. Like we rarely paid for a meal it was always like breakfast lunch and dinner was like covered by yeah. you know whatever entity was putting the show together but uh some really great uh sausage in germany wiener schnitzel mm. really really amazing i had um so much bread every day i think i gained 12 pounds i'm afraid to get on a scale but everything everything is small everything is bad right now we just got back on tuesday so oh you mean clothing wise yeah i'm, jo- I'm joining <laughs> dolphin fitness in rockville center tomorrow <laughs> and uh, are you saying it was like a lot of like meats wrapped in bread type yeah situation? bread and cheese bread and cheese yeah, yeah. Lot it's crazy of cheese. For considering how like thin a lot of those people yeah. look like what their diets are yeah i can't imagine any food um catastrophes like i can't um, wait to some bad food in the uk oh we had some really bad mexican food in scotland Oof. Yeah, doesn't seem like oh. a place to get good Mexican food. No. You, know? you guys got Mexican food. I would feel like, you know, everywhere I've traveled that's not attached to Mexico by like <laughs> land, yeah. um, I would think that like <laughs> An having enormous Mexi- ocean. Yeah, I would it. feel like just there is just so much lost in like transatlantic translation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think they used Swiss cheese and like this really sweet like marinara sauce. It was like it was really disaster. But that wasn't our active. Um, decision. We were kind of just like that was what it's we what, were fed. Yeah. So we were like, all right. Well, if we pretend it's not Mexican food, and it's just something it's entirely like, different. Yeah, just yeah. like food. We then de- <laughs> deconstructed <laughs> yeah. Mexican food. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. For like sure. burritos always spelled with like one or three R's. It's like super <laughs> super terrible. Just uh, it's just like a steer clear. I'm sure that there's some international foods they just like if, if they were to try to do it here, it's like there's no way that you can get. Oh yeah, totally. The ingredients. Or things like that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Don't get Mexican across the Atlantic, I guess. <laughs> I think like that's a word to live by. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that is totally worth <laughs> live by. Uh, so now you're back. Yeah. And uh, what do uh, future future months hold for you? Oy, what are we doing? We're touring a little bit in November. I think we're doing some CMJ stuff in the next couple of weeks. Like CMJ Festival starts like mm. third... Next week. Third next week or something. Next, yeah. I feel like it starts... Earlier each year. Yeah. I think it yeah. starts yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly what we're doing during CMJ, but I know we're doing a bunch of college shows in October and November yeah. in the Northeast. College shows are the best. Yeah. Yep. They're fun. We played at Purchase last night, and it was a really good show. It was like the first, you know, it was our first show back in the States, and it was... Yeah, it, it was, was cool. Yeah. My little brother goes there now. He just transferred, so got to see him. That's awesome. <laughs> Check up on him, make sure he's, he's, living, he's living right. Do you yes. do a lot of uh, college radio shows? Um, we've done some, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We did, uh, we did BU, did, <laughs> yeah. uh, some You know, Athens, my, my very first radio show was at BU. Oh, really? Ever. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I wonder if it's the same thing. I heard it used to be crazy and kind of no, no control and no holds barred. And I mean, like, I used to, I'm, I'm not there anymore, so they right. can't do anything to me, <laughs> but it used to be like, my show was at 2 a.m. on Thursday, so, uh, and it was, I think it was every week? Yeah, it had to be every week. So it would, like, go out with my book of CDs. Um, get as drunk as I possibly could to like 140, bike over there, and then just like do the show, uh, which they like had a live camera and then pretend like I wasn't totally hammered um, doing the radio show. Oh, they, they so they could film you. Uh, they did film. I mean, they filmed me. I my my brother and cohort actually um, had a show the semester before, and that's how I got a show. And he and his uh, roommates went on and were like so drunk that they actually got banned um and in a lot of trouble for it 
So. I think it's a lot different now because it was like it seemed like it was kind of a tight ship. Uh, I don't know, but. I heard stories of people who graduated BU maybe like six years ago or something that have said similar stories to yeah. me. Yeah, Didn't I, Alex have a radio show? Yeah, they or said they accordion would just, player had They would a radio do very show. similar things, just go in the in the studio yeah. with the mic on and just kind of scream drunkenly. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't I mean I didn't want to get in that much trouble. So, uh, but it was definitely like, a, you know, I mean, it's like you're giving a 19 year old kid a microphone at 2 a.m. Like I don't not really sure what you're ex- what you're expecting. Right, right. <laughs> um, why don't we get a, a get another song? Okay. How those pipes doing? They're, they're okay. Okay. They sound great. Thank you. Oh. Uh, that string's a little... A little... Uh, I don't want to know if I should mess around. Sometimes that's a slippery slope. You change one thing. You have to change everything. Nothing's right. That I applies to a lot of now. things. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. My fingers are a little greasy from the delicious pizza here. At, at Roberta's? Thanks, Roberta's. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always like... There's definitely some grease stains left on some instruments. No, I'm, I'm into it, though. This isn't my guitar, so... Don't worry. <laughs> Lots of confessions today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. This song's called Barnacles. It's from our new record. It's about love. All right. Here we go. Let's see how this goes. Scrape these barnacles. I am whole again. Finally purified Whatever that means Put your back in it They lay their roots deep within the pain Free me, free me From the teeth Oh, but don't cut too deep Scrape these barnacles I am utterly to give that look at the end that was great what's that was look okay? for oh. <laughs> all of roberta's is cheering yeah oh, oh that's amazing beautiful we always talk we used to have like our own sample thing and i'd always hit like the wrong it'd be like, <laughs> there it is that, oh. literally that's all i would ever hit that's fierce. Uh, that that or like it'd be a drop for another show and then just like <laughs> and we had to cancel so like be like stop re-edit that was great Thank you. That was like the Richard Bay show. Do you remember that? Uh, no. What is that? He had a lot of samples. It was awesome. It was like Jerry Springer, but he had like a sample board oh, thing. Really? He'd be like, sit down, <laughs> shut up. And when a fat person came out, there would be like, moo, or like pig noise. Got it. Very, it was, very it, high class. Yeah, it was an awesome show. Um, so that's off the new record, which yeah. came out this year? Mm, April 26th. Which is still this year. 2008. 11. You got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so what is the writing process uh, for for you guys? Um, I do and gal. the writing uh, alone. 
and sometimes it's all chopped up into pieces and so the band helps me weave it together and arrange it um, to be bigger. Sometimes I have ideas for the other instruments, sometimes they come up with their own ideas, so it's definitely like a give and take. But I need to be alone for the writing, the initial writing process, which, you know, we don't get to have much of right now because we've been on tour and everything's kind of crazy, but I'm excited to... No songs written in the Sprinter? Um, Over the summer, I wrote probably like 10, so... We're that on our way. Not in, not in the van, though. No, no, no. Yeah, we had an apartment in Crown Heights, so I had some alone time. Mike was working, so it was that was perfect. We had like two months of kind of peace, which was cool. That's amazing. Uh, so we talked about the future, and <laughs> we talked about that. But like, let's talk about working at the record, uh, all of that good stuff. Uh, you should say that, Mike. I don't know about that. About what? About working Website. on the record? No, where can you get the record? Oh, where can All you get the stuff? record? He's our, oh, he's our oh. tech guy. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you can get it. It's on Don Giovanni Records. George is already oh, on oh, iTunes. George. Man, George. George, George is downloading George is downloading it. <laughs> iTunes. What do you call that? It, that's an iPad. That's an iPad. I was going to call it a lap pad. <laughs> a lap pad. <laughs> a lap pad. I'm on there. I yeah, guess. I mean, if you if you like uh, if you like vinyl or CDs, if you collect physical records, you can buy it from Don Giovanni Records. Um, it's the label that put it out. Or if you can get it on. Is iTunes. Is that the label that pays you? Uh, well, <laughs> do they pay us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they're. I'm just kidding. They're they're great. They're a really good label. And Joe and Zach, the guys who run the label, very detail oriented, very into talking anytime we need to discuss yeah. uh, and they're gonna have a showcase in february i think every year they do uh don giovanni showcase we did it last year we played uh it was at music hall williamsburg sold out it was us and screaming females and shell shag and lemuria and birds, birds of paradise. paradise it was a really really awesome that's awesome show. yeah it's a great lineup yeah and really i love good. that venue yeah. yeah it could be the one of the best sound systems uh, yeah. in new york it's the same say. the same people who do bowery ballroom mm-hmm. it's just like those those people know what they're doing it's yes. just like great um, so website, Twitter, things like that. Laura Stevenson and the cans dot com. That's a website, yeah. Uh, uh, and Twitter is Laura and the cans. It's confusing. Yeah. Email is Laura and cans <laughs> at <Wow>. gmail. <laughs> yeah, there, it's, yeah. it's just the all map. over the. We place. should talk about you know a unified message. <laughs> I know we tried sure. to do that, and uh, I don't know if it worked. And th- then some of us weren't getting the mass emails and. It was a real mess. We fear change. Yeah. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. But well, I want to thank you for coming on Snacky Tunes. Yeah, thank Thanks you for having George us. George is still here with us. Uh, those potato chips he brought were awesome. Oh, yeah. They had a quite the heft to them, <laughs> like a heavy Pringle, as Laura as well so mm. put it. Um, I was hoping we can get one more song out of you before we get out of here. Okay, I think I'm going to do a new one. Um, I just started writing a little bit, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. Uh, take these puppies off you can take them off cool idea yeah that's fine uh next week we're gonna have a very special cmj edition episode we've got our regular show at 2 p.m and then we'll be doing 7 p.m um with the founder of moonshine uh moonshine liquor and um hands and wallpaper who wrote our theme song so that'll be at 7 p.m next week uh, and we're very excited for that so um tune in or just sign up for the podcast uh, at snacky tunes from the i iTunes shop and uh, yeah I'm getting off the mic and stop running my mouth and let Laura close <laughs> close this out you've I, now transferred your nervousness on to me oh no oh no it's infectious are your hands clammy and greasy at the uh, same time they're greasy but I think that's more the pizza and the chips but uh, anyway thank you for enough. listening um, <laughs> back next week with more episodes of Snacky Tunes alright this is a song called Bells and Whistles it's new I could have sworn time when we believed that we could measure out our lives just how we wanted it so we could live just as long as anybody ever did but I was wrong to lie like that I was wrong to lie like that so cold that it smelled sweet on your coat and the concrete got swollen and roared and it swallowed you whole I said don't try to argue with it it will take you home 
It's just another road under the one you used to know But I lied to you I didn't have a choice but to I lied, I lied to you And I can't hide forever and remain ashamed of it I can't cover my hands and tell you not to blame me That you are a speck in a pile of dust And everything you love will turn into crumbs So stop worrying, worrying, worry some love Stop worrying, worry some love And the bells and the whistles make definite sounds And then it's clear as a bell When the sound of your headache is louder than hell In the bend of a note you're alone In the bend of a note you're alone And you're alone So don't waste it all worrisome Thanks for listening to this program on the Heritage Radio Network. Shout out Lisa Chen. And all of our archived programs. You won. Heritage Radio Network. Free tickets. Um, as well as a schedule of upcoming live shows. You can also... Thanks for listening to this program on the Heritage Radio Network. You can find all of our archived programs on heritageradionetwork.com. As well as a schedule of upcoming live shows. You can also podcast all of our programs on iTunes by searching Heritage Radio Network in the iTunes Store. You can find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for up-to-date news and information. Thanks for listening. The following message has been brought to you by Taste Brooklyn. Our city's finest chefs partner with farmers and local vineyards next to the Green Market for an extraordinary outdoor culinary festival. Try exquisite delicacies using locally grown seasonal delights on the plaza outside Brooklyn's Borough Hall. Top chefs and artisans will offer sumptuous fare paired with premium wines, all to empower our neediest children to get healthy. The mighty FDNY and DSNY harbor their own culinary masters in uniform. They will cook off against the pros. Sample delicious cuisine without stressing over a reservation while supporting a worthy cause. Taste Brooklyn's Feel to Fork Outdoor Culinary Festival, Saturday, October 15th, 2011, from 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Learn more and buy tickets at tastesofbrooklyn.blogspot.com. That's T-A-S-T-E-S-O-F brooklyn.blogspot.com. As a part of National Food Day, St. John's Bread and Life, Brooklyn's innovative and life-saving food service program based in Bedford-Stuyvesant, is inviting Brooklyn chefs and purveyors to learn about how the organization is marrying the procurement of old-fashioned, locally grown, organic produce with the latest technology to deliver healthy, cost-effective meals to those in need. St. John's Bread and Life, located at 795 Lexington Avenue, will hold an open house on Monday, October 24th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Visit www.foodday.org to sign up for the event. This is a public service announcement from Sea to Table and Slow Food NYC. On October 11th, sustainable seafood distributor Sea to Table will join Slow Food New York City to host an event celebrating the bounty of local New York seafood. The event, Slow You Sustainable Sashimi, will feature a tasting of four fish species from local Montauk waters. The event will take place on Tuesday, October 11th, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Institute of Culinary Education, 50 West 23rd Street in Manhattan. Tickets are $25 for Slow Food members, $35 for non-members. Visit slowfoodnyc.org for more information about this event and how to get tickets.